Welcome to a screencast on an introduction to nuclear chemistry and nuclear reactions. Now, even though chemistry is generally about the electrons, uh, specifically the valence electrons and how they interact with each other, it turns out that sometimes we have to consider what's going on in the nucleus of atoms as well. Uh, now, over a hundred years ago, Henri Becquerel via some experiments with uranium salts and uh, photographic plates was the original discoverer of radioactivity. He found uh, that uranium was naturally uh, radioactive, naturally unstable, and in general in some atoms the nucleus is unstable and spontaneously emits small particles. Now atoms that do this, that spontaneously emit small particles or energy, are what we call radioactive elements. Every element has at least one radioactive isotope, which we call a radioisotope. And following the discovery of radioactivity, a number of scientists inv investigated it in more detail, Ernest Rutherford being one who used different radioactive substances encased in a lead block and he tracked the emissions from these radioactive substances, made them uh, into a beam, and had the beam go past some electrically charged plates and found that some substances emitted uh, radiation that was bent towards the positive and away from the negative plate. Other radiation was bent in the other direction towards the negative and away from the positive, and some radiation was undeflected uh, by the charged plates uh, at all. Now these three types of radiation he called alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Uh, he didn't know what they were initially but he just gave them the essentially Greek letters A, B, and C. And we now know what these types of radiation are. They're the three most common types of radioactive decay. Alpha decay is the emission of a high energy helium nucleus, so it's two protons and two neutrons. Beta decay is the emission of a high energy electron, what's known as a beta particle. And then gamma radiation is not actually a particle, it's high energy electromagnetic waves, higher energy even than x-rays. This is a um, chart showing some of the characteristics of these types of radiation. Alpha radiation we symbolize by the Greek letter alpha or 4,2-He indicating it has a charge of 2, a mass of 4 on an atomic scale at least, and it's a high energy helium nucleus, travels up to 10% of the speed of light, and it has a relatively low penetrating power. Similarly for beta, we symbolize it by the Greek letter beta, zero for the mass, negative one for the charge, E for electron, much smaller than a helium nucleus, much faster, more penetrating power, and then gamma similarly, uh, zero, zero for its charge and mass both being zero, and it travels at the speed of light with much more penetrating power. And in fact, alpha radiation can be stopped typically by maybe just a few sheets of paper, uh, or some thin clothing. Beta radiation will penetrate through uh, things that alpha radiation won't, but it will be stopped by metal sheeting or dense wood or heavy clothing. And then gamma radiation requires uh, thick walls of concrete or uh, some lead or very dense material like that to uh, stop it. Now one thing you're going to want to be able to do is write equations for types of radioactive decay and they're pretty easy to do actually. Uh, let's start with example one which is the decay, alpha decay of polonium 210. So we start with a polonium nucleus. Notice that uh, the 84 is the left hand subscript that indicates the atomic number of the element, which is its number of protons in the nucleus. 210, the left-hand superscript, is the mass number of this particular isotope. Remember, it's the total number of protons plus neutrons, which makes up the, uh, which I would make up the nucleus. And if polonium undergoes alpha decay, it will emit a helium nucleus. 
with a charge of two, two protons, and a mass of four because it has to four total nuclear particles. Now, when an alpha particle is emitted, the thing that is left we should be able to determine fairly easily, and if two protons um, are shot out of the nucleus, which originally contained 84, well, that's going to mean that 82 are left. And if four nuclear particles are emitted from the nucleus, which originally contained 210 nuclear particles, that leaves 206. And if we look on the periodic table, the element with atomic number 82 is lead. So this is a balanced nuclear equation for the alpha decay of polonium-210. Here's what it looks like uh, in sort of general terms. A nucleus consists of a number of protons and neutrons. Highlighted here are two protons and neutrons in this nucleus. And when alpha decay occurs, what ends up happening is the two protons and two neutrons that makes up the alpha particle are emitted and the nucleus that's left behind, which is called the daughter nucleus of the original parent nucleus, is smaller. Okay, example two, carbon-14 undergoes beta decay. Let's write that equation starting with C14, and six is the atomic number. Emits a beta particle, which is an electron, charge of negative one, mass of approximately zero. It's not really zero, but compared to the mass of uh, protons and neutrons, it's close enough for our purposes for now. And then we can either use the symbol small, uh, lowercase e for electron, or the beta symbol for a uh, beta particle. Either one is fine. And what that means is the particle that is left must have a total charge of six and a total mass of 14. So what that means is it must have a charge of 7 because 7 plus minus 1 adds up to 6, which we started with. And it has a mass of 14 because 14 plus 0 adds up to 14. And that is a nitrogen nucleus. And this might seem a little weird that a particle is emitted and the um, charge number or the atomic number increases, but that's what happens. Um, one way to think about this is here we have a radioactive carbon-14 nucleus, six protons, eight neutrons. It loses a beta particle, which is an electron, comes out of the nucleus, and even though the nucleus doesn't actually contain electrons, so to speak, we can essentially think of it as if a neutron uh, we could think of a neutron as being consi consisting of a proton and an electron. And so if the neutron emits an electron, that leaves behind a proton. So we now have one more proton than we had before and one less neutron than we had before. So the mass isn't changed, but the charge goes up by one. Third example, technetium-99, which is a, an element that is used uh, quite a bit in uh, various medical uh, testing procedures. It undergoes gamma decay. So let's write that equation. Technetium 99, uh, atomic number 43, emits gamma radiation, which has zero charge and zero mass. Well, what does that mean we have to be left with? Well, if no charge and no mass are emitted, we must have the same thing left behind. So technetium emits gamma radiation, and it's still technetium. Uh, note that we sometimes put a little M or an asterisk uh, in, uh, for the original material, the parent in this case, M standing for metastable or the asterisk standing for high energy, indicating that we start with a high energy nucleus and we end up with a lower energy nucleus when it gives off some energy in the form of gamma radiation. Now, another type of radiation uh, is the emission of positively charged electrons, which are called positrons. Uh, this is actually a form of antimatter, if you will. It's an anti-electron. And some substances, for example, oxygen-15, undergoes positron emission. Well, how do we write a positron emission equation? We start with the parent, oxygen-15. It emits not a negatively charged electron, but a positively charged electron. 
and that means that the remaining substance must uh, remaining substance must have a charge of 7 7 plus 1 equals 8 a mass of 15 15 plus 1 equals 15 and that is a nitrogen 15 nucleus and just as an interesting side note uh, might be talked about in class this is the basis for how a PET scan works if you've ever heard of that before uh, PET stands for positron emission tomography and uh, PET scans tell us something about what's going on uh, inside the body. Now one more type of radioactive uh, pr process that we'll talk about is called electron capture. Uh, it is what it sounds like and nucleus actually captures one of its own inner shell electrons. Um, this is the only type of radioactive decay that doesn't start with just one reactant and makes two products. We actually have two reactants in this case. So titanium-44, there's its uh, nuclear symbol. Now it captures an electron, so it grabs its own inner shell electron. So we actually have two starting materials, two reactants, but the same uh, rules apply. Charge has to balance and mass has to balance. So 22 plus negative 1 adds up to 21. 44 plus 0 adds up to 44. And so when titanium 44 undergoes electron capture, it produces a nucleus of scandium 44. Now in general, conversions of one nucleus, one radioisotope, which is also called a nuclide, into another is called a transmutation. And nuclear processes do uh, convert one element, one nucleus, into a different type of nucleus. And uh, this can occur naturally, like the spontaneous emission of alpha or beta or gamma radiation. But it can also occur when particles collide, which can be done in a, uh, which can occur in uh, nature and can be done in a, uh, in a laboratory or in an artificial way. So, for example, bombarding uranium-238 with alpha particles can produce, well, let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Um, uranium-238 has an atomic number 92. If it's bombarded with alpha particles, which are 4,2-alpha for their nuclear symbol, um, it's tough to predict products in general, but if you were told one of the products is a neutron, which has zero charge and a mass of one, so the lowercase n here stands for a neutron, well then if we balanced the charge and mass to determine the other product, we'd say, well, 238 plus 4, is 242 for our starting mass. One uh, is the mass of the neutron. That must mean the other particle must have a mass of 241 so that that totals to 242. And then similarly, it must have a charge of 94, which is equal to 92 plus 2 uh, because the neutron has zero charge. And that is the element plutonium. So it turns out that when we bombard uranium-238 with alpha particles, we can actually make the artificially created element plutonium, and it also gives off a neutron as well. And that is it for Introduction to Nuclear Chemistry and Nuclear Reactions.